Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to continue to talk about integration by parts. I actually left out this series for a long time because I was busy creating other videos and right now we are going to just come back to this series here. We are going to continue with the integration by parts and I want to cover the more advanced examples. Okay, now as you can see here, this one is not really that advanced. This one only requires doing integration by parts only once, but then there are more work that you need to do, right? So we are actually finding the antiderivative for this tangent inverse function, which comes up a lot when you are doing math. So um, this is actually a good one to do because um, it's a good idea to know how to do this one so that we can use the same idea to find the less common ones like the uh, the cosecant inverse or the secant inverse or the cotangent inverse. Okay, so if you have seen my uh, sine inverse, the example for sine inverse last time, then you should also watch this one. And then I will actually put, include the link in the description below so that you can see that one. Okay, so let's get started for this. So um, I just want to recall something right here, which is actually just the... Uh, the integration by pass formula. And so if you have it memorized, right? If you don't, that's fine, right? So if you're using the tablet method, then you probably don't even need to memorize that formula because uh, the tablet method actually uh, makes it really easy for you to write down the answer without having to memorizing the formula. Okay, so um, what is the formula? The formula is uv minus the integral of v du, but then again, we probably don't even need that, right? Now, um, we're using the tabular method to integrate this tangent inverse function. So what do we do? We get to set up the table first. And the table is going to be set up this way. And so there are four columns. And then uh, as you can see here, this first column in blue, it's the alternating in sign. This actually comes from uh, the minus sign from the formula. So if I recall the formula right here, right? So if I recall that formula, then it's it's the integral of u, which is the yellow column, right? And then um, the dv, which is the green column that we have. And that's equal to uv. So we have the yellow and then the green, right? And then minus the integral of v du. So the v is actually also, again, it's the green one. And then the du, the du will now become the yellow one. Right. And then, yeah, so that's that one here. And yeah, so that sign actually comes from this minus sign right here, because if um, imagine that you do integration by parts multiple times, then you are going to have to worry about negating uh, a lot of turns in there. So um, that's why we got to alternate the signs right here. OK, so now um, let's just start the problem by writing the plus sign right here. It's really because at the beginning, we are just talking about the u and then the v, right? So they're both um, having a, there. there is no sign in front of them. So we are just going to assume that it's going to be multiplying by positive 1. OK, so now what about the u? The u is going to be whatever that you choose that you can differentiate. In this case, we only have one function here. It's too simple, right? There was no other choices. And you can only write down the tangent inverse of x. OK, so there are no other choices that you can put here. And then the green column, which is the i column, the i column is when you can integrate something. There is nothing else left, right? Once you have put down the tangent inverse, so you can only put down the one. And it should also include the dx in here, but then I'm not going to include the dx in here because it's, it's unnecessary. So we are omitting the dx. So the dx must be put in here. Okay, so now what's going on with this column right here? This column, I feel that it's actually quite important to... Um, to use. It's really because that will actually tell us when we can stop with the integration by parts. So we are not just blindly going down the columns by taking derivatives and integrating the functions. Okay, so right now, what are we getting here? We just multiply everything across this first row right here, then we are going to get this integral. And so we assume that plus sign is positive one, right? So you don't need to write anything down. In this case, it's actually just the tangent inverse right, of x, and then the 1 is just the 1, 1 dx. So do you see what's going on here? This is exactly the original integral. 
and it's supposed to be that way. So if you multiply all this stuff together and then you find that you are not getting the original integral, something's wrong here. So you gotta come back to the, uh, the D and the I columns to fix them. Okay, so make sure that you do that. Now, the next step is to start differentiating. So what do you do? Um, we are going to look at this integral of VDU right here. So we are going to put down the, um, the minus sign right here. Okay, and then now we need to take the derivative of the tangent inverse of x. So what is the derivative of tangent inverse of x? It's going to be one over one plus x squared. Okay, one over one plus x squared. And then we also got to integrate the one, right? In fact, it's integrating the one dx. And so we are just getting the x right here. And also there should be a dx right here. But again, I as I said before, we are omitting all the dx's. There was a dx here, we are omitting it. There was a dx here, we are also omitting that. Okay, so now multiply all this across and see what you are getting here. And so we are getting, um, the, there was a minus sign right there, and then there was the integral symbol, okay? And then there was the green x all over the one plus x squared, okay? And then, um, yeah, so there was also the dx right here, right? That's part of this expression, the dx is part of this expression. So I'm still putting in yellow, even though we're omitting that there. So see this integral here. And then now you just need to ask yourself, can we integrate this integral? I mean, can we do this integral if we can, right? If we can, then we do not need to continue. So don't continue going down the column, right? There was no point to take the derivative of this one and then take the antiderivative of that one and then continue with the integration. We All we need to do is to integrate this. Okay, so now let's just talk about how to integrate this one. Um, in fact, it's really just a simple u sub. As you can see here, so let me write down the integral. Okay, so we have the x. Right, and then we get the one plus x squared and then the dx. Yeah, so how do we do this one? How do we do this one? Um, it's actually simple. So we can make a u sub right here, but because we are actually using the integration by parts, so it's not a good idea to use u again for the u sub. So we are going to use w, right? So let's just use w here. Um, so I'm just going to say w is equal to whatever that comes. Uh, in the denominator, which is one plus x squared. So we get one plus x squared. And so what is dw? dw is two x dx. Okay, so far so good. Now, see that there was, um, there was an x, we already have the x, we already have the dx. We don't really have the minus sign. And then we also do not have the two, so we can get the two on the other side. So right now we have um, one half dw is equal to x dx. Yeah, so we can actually make the substitution on here. So let's do the integration. So we get minus integral. So the x and the dx together will be replaced by one half dw. So we get one half dw. Okay, so far so good. And then what do we put at the bottom? The bottom is going to be um, just w because it, w is equal to one plus x squared, which is the exact same thing right here, so w. Okay, let's clean up the integral a little, a little bit here. So if we put the uh, negative one half and then the integral of one over w dw, and then you can see that that's really just a simple function that we integrate. So we are actually getting negative one over two ln of absolute value of w. And what is that? That's actually just one half ln of, now absolute value of w, w is this expression right here, one plus x squared. Okay, so we have one plus x squared. And then um, there was the constant of integration here. I'm just going to put it at the end when I write down the final answer. So for now, I'm omitting that for, for what we have here. Um, so just know that one plus x squared is going to be always positive, right? 
um, because this, the smallest value for x squared is zero. So there is no way that you can get a negative number in there. So this is always positive. So that means we do not really need the absolute value anymore. So we can simply just put ln of one plus x squared. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so now we can actually start writing down the answer. How do you write down the final answer? This is not the final answer. This is only the um, the result for integrating this function. Okay, so now what do we do? Um, we got to draw some arrows on the table. Right? The table actually makes it easy for you to uh, write down the final answer without having to memorize the formula. So we are going to get the, uh, the plus connecting with the tangent inverse here and then going down this way. Okay, so going down this way, and then you can see that um, final answer. All right, so let me put down the original integral, and that's equal to, okay, so now that's positive one, so we don't need to put it. And so we can put down the x, and then we can put down the um, tangent inverse, right? So multiply them together. Okay, and then you got to put down this here. You got to put down this integral here, but we are not going to do that because we already integrated that. So we are going to put that right here. So we are getting negative one over two, ln of one plus x squared. Okay, and then finally we at the constant of integration right here, we should have put it right here, but then now just put it here. Okay. So how do you feel? It's actually quite easy, right? The table actually makes it really easy. And then you may say, why does it work? Remember, this is our u, that's our dv. So, I mean, that's our v, this is dv. So u times a v, that gives us the uv. And this is actually the what? This comes from the integral of v du, that's from here. You see that that's how that, um, the table works. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and share my videos to others. It will give me support to make more videos. If you have questions or have a topic that you want me to talk about, please leave me a comment. Thank you for watching this video. I will see.